Hello, my loves. Welcome back to another video here on Starseed Academy. My name is Jenny. Today we are going to be talking all about the secrets of Avalon. If you don't know what that is, do not worry. I'm going to explain it to you. But basically, Avalon was a time on Earth when magic was still here. Um, a lot of people resonate with Avalon, my husband included, whom you can find on Instagram as the Oracle of Avalon. That's how much he resonates with Avalon. Um, and he specializes in Avalon readings. So if this this all really resonates with you. Go look him up for sure. Um, okay, so I want to do this because I did a membership event today where we did a journey to Avalon. Whenever I tune into like what's the theme of the month, it's a download, right? I was like, oh, ancestors, the one month we have to do a theme of ancestors. And the next month was like uh, the aura. We Last month was all about the aura. We've been doing auric upgrades, auric readings, auric scanning. So there's always like kind of like a monthly theme. And this month, September, the theme is Avalon. So I just this, this morning or earlier today did a journey to Avalon. And there was so much incredible information that came through during that journey to Avalon about the history of humanity of all things that I absolutely had to put it somewhere on YouTube for you all to enjoy as well. So let's get into it now before I drop the the all of the information in the notes that I have here. Just a couple of quick things. Check out the description of this video on how to work with me more deeply. I am doing really, really potent one month mentorships right now with Star Seeds, and it's called the Sovereign Creator Codex. And inside of this one month mentorship, we are going so deeply into um, soul contracts, karma, Akashic records, ancestral work, soul gifts who your star nations alliance is and activating that star seed template, uh, manifestation, healing. Oh my God. Like there's so many different ways that we could go. And that's why it's very customized to each person. So that's just some of the ideas of the things that we have been working on in there, but go and check out the link in the description, because then you'll see when you get on the page, all the incredible things that we could work on together inside of this one month mentorship. The testimonials are insane. The experiences, if you're on my email list or follow me on Instagram, I've been sharing a lot of like, what the fuck is happening behind the scenes? And it's insane. Okay. Insane stuff is happening. Um, incredible, incredible transformation. So that would be, if you want to work with me deeper, that is something that I'm really enjoying right now. And it's one of the most powerful ways that you can do that to work with me. Okay, um, make sure also that you're subscribed to this channel here on YouTube. Don't miss a video. All right, so let's talk about Avalon. So what is Avalon first? Before this video, before today, when I had a little bit of a more limited information, all I knew was that Avalon was a golden era on Earth. It was like, you know how we have like Lemuria and we've had Atlantis and we've had like these times on Earth when Gaia was in her golden era right? Gaia is um, a school planet. So she goes from golden era at the top. Think of this like a circle, like a dial. She goes from golden era down to dark ages, back up to golden era in this cycle that is called the procession cycle. During this procession cycle, people experience descension followed by ascension, humanity, but also the animals, the nature kingdom, the planet herself, and all of that. Now, what science and astrologists have determined is, um, astrologists? Astrology, no, astronomists, people that are actually looking at like the movements of things in the sky, maybe astrologists too, doesn't matter. What people have determined, these sciencey people, is that when Gaia moves into her golden era, it's it's aligned with the time when we move into a specific photon belt of light. So maybe you've heard about that. I've talked a lot about it here on this channel for sure. There's a photon belt of light that our solar system, including our sun, travels through on this cycle. And every time we go through that, we experience a golden era, higher consciousness, evolution of the species on earth. All of a sudden we are living longer and we've got all these gifts and we're super connected to the higher realms and disclosure happens. It's a crazy, beautiful time to be on earth, AKA golden era, AKA Lemuria, that kind of vibe. Um, and then obviously we know what the dark ages are. 
So Gaia never stops. She's always cycling through these. Okay. So Avalon, what I understood it to be was, was a golden time. Like I thought it was like this really incredible, beautiful time on earth. I knew that there was magic. This is the place that our fairy tales come from because Avalon was whenever I see it in my mind's eye or journey there, I see green like green, 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 like think like Ireland, like green trees and green fields and green life. And it's so beautiful. Um, So lots of green. And then I also see unicorns. Okay, that's where they came from. Dragons, witches, wizards, the fae, elven beings, trolls, sprites, that kind of fairy tale realm of all of these different kinds of creatures. Sorry, there's cat hair going everywhere fairy tale realm, very green and very filled with real magic, right? Um, Where it was one of the elements, you know, how we have access to the elements of wind, water, fire, earth. It was an element. It was its own element, magic. Um, Okay. So that's what I understood before today. So now I have more information because I've done an Avalon video before, but now I want to talk about the secrets of Avalon because there's more to it. So the first thing is that this information was, uh, came from an Avalonian being and it was a wizard and his name was Will. And he came through in the journey. So if you're watching this and you're a member, you already met him in the in the journey to Avalon. Um, so he told me that a lot of things. Let's start with who he who he is, right? He showed me that on on Avalon, Avalon was on Earth, okay, but that he is not human, even though we might think of witches and wizards as being human, that they're not, okay? So he said that he's actually a galactic being, and he showed me how much taller he was than a regular human, and that their ancestors, the Magi, came from the stars, and then they came to Earth, and then they ended up staying, right? And so then eventually they um, take on a lot of earth ways and, and he said they even took on the earthly terms of witch and wizard and they do, and he does refer to himself as a wizard, even though, you know, way back that wouldn't be necessarily what they would have called themselves. He said the technical terms was that the, that the men were the magi and the women of this species were the kumang like C-O-U-M-A-N-T. It sounded like a French word. And I tried looking it up. I don't know what it's not showing as anything on Google, but that's what he said. So I'm just letting you know. Magi and Kumon, that they had galactic energies, or sorry, galactic origins, and that they are much taller than humans. Okay, so that's our idea of witches and wizards. But stick with me, because there's a whole other thing about witches coming up. If you're like, well, wait a minute, my auntie was a witch. Stick with me on this. This was the origins, the originations of that. Okay. Um, So very tall, looked human, but technically we're not from earth. Okay. The next kind of being that was in Avalon were definitely the Fae. So the Fae were like very prevalent in Avalon. Um, Now these are not like Tinkerbell. Okay. Tinkerbell is technically a sprite, which are the little guys with the wings. Okay. The Fae are tall like like humans, taller than humans. So they look like humans and you don't see any wings and they're, and they're, and they're like, they do have the pointy ears, but they're not little sprites. Okay. So we've got little Tinkerbells. There's the sprites. They were in Avalon. And then there was like the human sized fae. Okay. So pointy ears. This is where a lot of our fairy tales come from. It's like always from something true, right? And also they wanted, what I want to share is that they also were taller than regular humans. Cause like I said, humans were there and I could see, and also I was there and the group of my members from the membership. And I could see how much shorter we were. We were coming up to like here on these, on the Fae and on this wizard guy, like they were a lot bigger than regular humans. That's just their species. So the Fae, um, are very connected to unicorns. Okay, so like fae and unicorns had this real bond together where the unicorns were a lot bigger than regular horses. They were huge. They were so tall. A lot of people don't realize how much bigger they were. And so that worked perfectly for the fae to ride on horseback, right? Because the human horses were way too small. So there were fae and and again 
that's what they look like. Okay. Now I didn't receive that the Fae were of galactic origins. In fact, I, I mean, I really, I didn't, I didn't receive whether they were or they weren't, but it didn't feel like they were like, it felt like maybe this was like an organic kind of earth being that just happened to be a long time ago kind of thing. Um, we've talked about the sprites. The next one is trolls. There are definitely trolls in Avalon. Um, there are the really big ones, the really big tall ones uh, that seem like giants. And um, and then there were little, little ones that are more like brownies, you know, like little creatures that move around. So what happened was the first place that they took us inside of Avalon was to the Enchanted Forest. And we saw all these eyes on us. There were the little sprites, there were brownies, trolls, all of these little magical creatures. But other than the creatures being quite different, the forest still felt like earth. Like it was a beautiful, green, beautiful forest and had a very strong earth vibe. It was Gaia, right? This, it, this happened on earth, but there was all of these extra beings, magical creatures that we don't have anymore today. Um, I forgot to mention dragons were also a part of this. Now, wizards and dragons seem to have a really strong connection the way that fae and unicorns did like they just worked really well together and i did see that there was a dragon with this particular wizard called will um and i knew that there were also like a section of avalon where the dragons lived not in the enchanted forest where the fairies and the sprites and the unicorns are but more in like the tall stone spires and then the mountains in that part of the region um but this was all earth and this was all real. And I know it sounds like a fairy tale right now, but I'm telling you this actually existed at one time on earth. And this is why so many people feel so drawn to this kind of stuff. The last thing, the thing that really surprised me was the mermaids. So he said, Will said that in this journey together that mermaids are here as well. And I was like, what? Like, I kind of thought that was a fable. Whenever anyone's asked me about mermaids and I've tried to channel it, I've always just received like aquatic beings, aquatic style beings from other galaxies that certainly don't look like the little mermaid with the pretty hair and they're bald and they've got gills and like kind of human shape, but not what people think a mermaid is, right? Well, this time I finally got to see that that was something that existed. And so he brought us to this lagoon and it was all very quiet. There was a there was a waterfall that was kind of noisy, but the rest was like lily pads and frogs, and there was nothing there. They were all under the surface of the water. And then he did something with his staff where he dipped it into the water like a calling card or like a doorbell, and then they started to like rise up out of the water. And it was only females that we saw in this particular lagoon. Now they actually had really beautiful long hair, um, and from the waist up, they would just look like a naked woman. Um, and there was no like seashells or they weren't worried about like that kind of human modesty. And then from the waist down, it was literally like a tail, like a fish tail, right? And all different colors. Uh, all of them had different colored hair and different. And the interesting thing is, I don't think I said this during the, the group uh, journey to the members, but I noticed that the hair color and the tail color kind of matched. So if someone had like reddish hair, they had kind of like a copper colored tail, that kind of thing, which was kind of cool. Um, and so these females, because I asked, are there males? I'm only seeing females here. And they let me know that the way that that particular society works, mermaids, is that the males bring their females and their offspring, like the babies and the children, into safe lagoons for most of the year. They stay and the women all live together like one big community or one big family and they raise children together and all of that. And that there was only like one real season, they called it, of the year where the women and the men came together. And that was like um, the women would then actually leave the safety of this lagoon, which was more like a lake. And they would go into the wild, which was the ocean, by the way. And they would have like a time or a season with the men. Now, the reason that they weren't together year long is because the ocean they're showing me, they started to show me sharks and all of these different creatures. And it was actually quite a dangerous place to be. And so that's why they put their women and their children into safe lagoons around the earth. So the lakes, basically. So lakes, magical lakes probably have a lot of mermaid vibes, but they actually are from the ocean. Um, okay. And so... 
that's pretty much all that there is to say about mermaids. I mean, that's all that I learned today, but I just, the fact that they were even real and, and were on earth at one time in that, in that Disney vibe way was so, so amazing. Let's talk about the real juicy stuff, which is the humans. So humans were, um, very small, um, in comparison to everyone else, we're just regular size to us, but you know, comparison to like the Fae, the Fae were very tall. The Magi were very tall. The wizards, um, even the mermaids, you could tell if they were like standing on their feet, that they were a lot bigger as well. Um, and then humans just seem like very small, but anyway, that was just something I noticed. And then they brought us to this human village because humans did exist on Avalon as well. And they showed it to us. And what Will explained to me was that they were healing because um, they had just been like emancipated from slavery. And I was like, pardon? And he said, humans are a pretty new species still. And they've only just in the last 100 years or so been emancipated from their slavery, which is what they were born into. And I was like, we are going to need more info on that because I've heard that humans were built to be a slave race before, but how, like how much detail do we really have on that? We need more detail on that. Right. And so what he explained was that, um, that this, the state of the village right now was these new humans, newish, they'd been like slaves less than a hundred years, but they had been slaves for a few hundred years when they were first created. Um, and that, where they were now, I'll tell you about the slavery time, but first let me just explain. Here they are in Avalon learning how to govern themselves, like like a like a baby species, basically, like something brand new, learning how to govern themselves with like laws and rules, trying to build like a semblance of what we would now understand to be a community. They were trying to build like homes. They understood fire, shelter. They weren't cavemen, they were humans, and they and they did have like homes and food. They were trying to farm. They had fires. They had families. They had neighbors. They had a language that they were all speaking, but they didn't have something like anything around learning how to govern themselves yet. And that's where they were learning, well, do we need healers? Do we need laws and rules? Well, who's in charge? Well, what about schools? All the kinds of things that would come later in a community. Um, because now they weren't just constantly spending time just worried about staying alive. Now they were able to try to thrive. So it was this really like beautiful, vulnerable time for humanity. Um, I did notice that there were cats and dogs in the village. And when I noticed that um, the wizard Will, this Avalonian being that I got most of this information from, and he took us around on this tour, he was saying that cats and dogs were always meant to be with humans. Like, don't feel bad about that. We've domesticated them. He's like, they've always been a companion animal. Dogs and cats specifically are always going to be with humans. Like they just, that's what goes together. Um, and also I saw chickens and I saw horses, our sized horses, regular sized horses. Um, and he then showed me, we kind of fast forwarded a little bit looking at Avalon and these little humble villages. And he fast forwarded and he said, in like the blink of an eye, it feels like in, in such humans grow and evolve so quickly. It's like a blink of an eye for them. He's like, you're going to see kingdoms popping up sooner than to him because he wizards live a really long time in comparison to humans as well maybe because our lifespans are so short we make a lot freaking happen in those lives and he's like in no time in the blink of an eye we go from humble villages to kingdoms kings and queens and knights and big beautiful kingdoms with lots of power and and it's so beautiful and to the point where like the wizards and the and the and the fey beings and the elven beings and all that come and and even start you know working with those kingdoms right where we've raised ourselves up to feel like we're not equals exactly because they're just all so different but raised ourselves up to where like wizards would want to to help and be of service you know to that so so it it all happens really quickly for humanity um so let's talk about the slavery stuff that's really important obviously so this was Egypt. Okay. So he said it was a new species created in ancient Egypt, but that ancient Egypt is a lot longer ago than we think. I think our historians will say that it was like six or 7,000 years ago, or maybe 10 at the most. And he's like, think 20,000 years ago, at least like a long time ago. He said, and also ancient Egypt was a lot larger than people realize. It was like the epicenter of the world. 
it was huge and it was a very, very, very long time ago. Okay. So he said that it was a new species from ancient Egypt and that we were created with a blend, which I think a lot of people know we were seeded with a lot of galactic energy DNA, um, galactic DNAs, Anunnaki, which we also probably knew randomly. The third thing was like this very Sasquatch looking creature, like a Bigfoot style creature. I don't know why. Um, and, and I know that people think that we come from apes and maybe that's what they're reading in the DNA, but it actually looked more like Bigfoot, like huge, right? And then Will was also kind of like laughing at the fact that Anunnaki are huge. Sasquatches are very large. Not all galactic beings are big, but some of them are. And he just said, you guys came out a lot smaller than they thought you were going to. And so they just kept making more of you because they thought they were going to get these big hardy slaves that could like slug around pyramids and they got these tiny little like and so they just made a lot of us um but that's our originations which in a way is sad unless you love an underdog story because here we go you know started at the bottom now we here running the world um okay so let's talk about where does egypt fit in when we talk about golden eras okay so lemuria was our biggest golden era that was closest to us. Like Lemuria is the one that everyone always like tunes into true golden era Lemuria. Okay. That was a true one. Um, that one was like so beautiful, very divine feminine and very like connected to Gaia and very spiritual and very magical. Amazing golden era on earth Lemuria that sunk down into Atlantis and I know that I've done a lot of videos, so I won't go over it all now, but why that happened. There was a lot of um, ego energy involved in people wanting to create things that gave them more power um, and creating technology and ruling systems of class and all of these things that were not this organic divine feminine energy. And when, because though, because it's natural because remember I said Gaia goes from golden era and then her frequency dips because she's a school and then she comes right back up again. And that whole cycle does take a really long time, but it's going to happen. Well, that's what happened. Lemuria had its time. And then as the frequency started to dip here on earth, the ego comes out to play. And, and, and that's when a lot of like masculine energy uh, toxic masculine energy, uh, really came in around power, 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 weapons, you know, let's, let's take over time. Let's travel to other timelines. Let's travel backwards in time, forwards in time. And they tried to do all these time walking things and like the, it got shut down, right? That's obviously like not allowed, even as just an astral traveler, there's so many different like loops and things that I have to go through to take people back in time or forward in time, a lot of councils and all the things. Um, okay. So Lemuria sunk down into Atlantis and then Atlantis like sunk into the ocean, right? We, we always hear it just like sunk into the ocean. Okay. Let's talk about the truth about that. Cause it's not exactly what we think. The first thing is the first thing that just was like changed everything that I ever believed was the fact that Lemuria is what the people that were on Lemuria, no matter what you're seeing in your third eye, were not the humans that we are now. They were not human, this version of human. This version of human that we all are can only be traced back as far as ancient Egypt. And before that, it was a different kind, like something else. You could call them human if you want to, but it was a completely different DNA. They did live longer and they were they were taller. I don't know why we're so small. Anyway, whenever I try, ask yourself this, if you're like me and you do Akashic uh, journeys and you you see people's past lives, honestly, Ask yourself, don't the people, especially the women in Lemuria, look a lot taller than us, though? Like, even if they look human, try to remind yourself, go back in your memory right now. They are they are a lot taller, though, aren't they? Right? They were. Okay, anyway, I found out today, just blew my mind, that the humans in Lemuria are not the humans that we are. We're not related to them right? That doesn't mean you didn't have a past life there. You absolutely probably did. I'm just saying like on a DNA level, things got restarted. So Lemuria sunk into Atlantis. And then when Atlantis sunk, you know what they called that in the Bible? The great flood. 
things were so bad. Things got so bad that it got turned off. It got shut down. They, they close, they, they ended a species, right? It, w- it wasn't, I, I haven't, oh, dog's barking one second. He's good. Somebody's just driving by. Um, I haven't tuned into this yet. Maybe this could be a whole other video because I do not want this to be, it's already almost at the 30 minute mark. Oh my God. I haven't tuned into why. I mean, I know a lot of the issues with Atlantis and I can certainly imagine, but there must be like councils that can foresee, oh, this is never going to, this is never going to reclaim itself. Like they're never going to come back around to that like oneness that grounded that spiritual that connect like too far gone um and if humans are an experiment then they tried a different blend right so maybe that was a different blend and then we're and maybe they restarted us a couple of times but they certainly have at least once and that was just crazy to me because I don't know I guess I just didn't really believe that I've heard it but I never really believed it before today but I believe it now um okay so what, I mean, what else can I share? I mean, that's such a huge thing. Okay. So the other thing here that I wanted to share was that if you think of Gaia, like a mainframe, right? So Gaia is like a mainframe computer. And in that mainframe computer, there are servers that hold worlds. Okay. Gaia can hold a world in a server and let it continue on living outside of the growth cycle that we talked about where it has to descend and then ascend and then descend and this is this constant thing she can have worlds in on they they gave it to me like a computer so i can understand it the mainframe has servers where worlds can be placed outside of this growth cycle of this constant time right so that means that there are worlds in servers like Atlantis, Lemuria, Avalon, the one that we've been talking about. And you can visit them astrally. You can have another lifetime there. Like you can cross over and then build up some soul contracts. I want to go to Lemuria again, right? I need to, I need to do this or I need to have that experience again for whatever reason, or I just want to, because I love Avalon. I want to go back there again. You can visit, but they are not in the growth cycle anymore. They're a little bit frozen in time, right? Whereas our world, this version of Earth right now, is in a growth cycle. It is a school of karma. (laughs) It is spicy. It is spontaneous. And free will is everywhere. And this is why our planet of Earth is so coveted to come to that people want to have lifetimes here. This is why it is so difficult and advanced and this is why it gets so much attention from outside sources, galactic eyes all on us, because there's not a lot of planets in this grand scope of things. I don't know what the percentage is, but there's certainly not um, as many planets in natural growth cycles as there are stored in servers that are kind of like frozen in time, right? It's a big deal. Earth is hard because of that. And I also heard like Earth is so spontaneous that even Gaia doesn't know what's going to happen. And it's her. Like she can't even say what she'll evolve into or what humans will evolve into or what's going to happen. It's just crazy. And so, yeah, our world is in that growth cycle. All right. (laughs) I think that's all I have for my notes. I'm just trying to think if there's anything I did not say or missed. I mean, I'm sure you can go ahead and pop your questions below because I was a little bit, I mean, there's just so much information. uh, So I know I could go deeper into all of it, but I wanted to give you like what I touched on today, everything that I learned today, because I always want to keep you guys abreast of all of the new information. Um, Yeah. So we're like a lot smaller than they thought we were going to (laughs) be. Isn't that so funny? Like, and I kind of think we are like now that I'm just looking at like the size of humanity compared to even just like a deer or a bear, like we were supposed to be the rulers of our world or whatever. And we're just so small. And, and they were all, he said, like they, they, they being the people that made us all the things that I mentioned, were all like really like surprised at how small we came out and maybe even a little disappointed by that, but it's just a freaky, spontaneous free will. You're going to create life. You're not going to know what's going to happen thing, but 
But here we are, you know, we've evolved so much and our world sure does look a lot different. And I know people crave the old days of Avalon and magic and stuff. And technically you can't really go back in time, but you can, right? You can visit these worlds still. There's still there's still life force in them. There's still people that live there. There's still souls incarnating with soul contracts, just like on Earth. Souls still incarnate with soul contracts into Lemuria and Atlantis and Avalon. It's just that it's not in a growth cycle anymore. So it's not going to be these crazy big um, spontaneous free will growth experiences. That doesn't mean you can't learn lessons and that doesn't mean that it's not valid. It just means it's not the same as what we're going through here on earth. Right. And that that's why our planet is so special. So anyway, this was a lot to do with Avalon, but it was also a lot to do with just like the history of humanity. Um, and so who knows what I'll call this video, but I hope that you enjoyed it and I and I'm happy to share this new stuff with you. I have to hop off. I have I'm doing a kids mentorship in about 5 minutes. So, thank you so much if you're still here and you hung out this whole time. You are a true OG and I love you. Um meet me back here next Sunday for another new video and before you go, please remember listen to your heart and the quiet voice within. Because you are so much more than the body you are in. I love you, beautiful soul. Have a great day. Bye.